The Lee Mansion is the most important and largest possession of the Marblehead Historical Society. When the Society assumed ownership of the building 100 years ago, it also resumed the responsibility of its care and maintenance. Repairs to the building were made immediately, and plans were made to establish a maintenance program that was ongoing. Raising the funds necessary to get the work done was and continues to be an important concern, and many of the fundraising events that the Society holds are to make repairs to the building. During the Depression, when maintenance had to be postponed for lack of funds, repairs many times were paid for by generous members of the board. On more than one occasion, serious conditions have caused funds to be expended immediately on damage repair. For several years, in the late 1940s and early 50s, the house and the garden were plagued by vandalism. Windows were broken, children got into the cellar, signs were destroyed, fences and garden ornaments desecrated. The outhouse was under constant attack. Damage to the building led to the installation of indoor facilities in 1953, and the structure was torn down the following year. During the decade of the 1970s, when public funds were available for private sector historic preservation, the Society's Building Committee Chairman, Thomas T. Sleeper, applied for and received a number of matching grants from the Massachusetts Historical Commission. It was during this time that the most consistent maintenance of the mansion was done. Narcissa Chamberlain, ever mindful of sensitive restoration, urged caution as work proceeded to rescue as much original material as possible. With a growing awareness of the need to protect and retain as opposed to remove and replace, studies have led to the development of new methods and materials that allow conservators to stabilize existing original elements such as window sills, moldings, door surrounds, etc. When the front facade of the mansion was being prepared for painting in 1987, the contractor was able to save much of the original wood by taking advantage of new technology. Long before the scaffolding went up, after much research, assimilation of technical data, and considerable discussion, the decision was made to replicate the original finish applied to Jeremiah Lee's house in 1768. The rustication or stone ashlar blocks that made up the sheathing of the Lee Mansion simulate the stone blocks used to build the fashionable Georgian houses of England and Ireland. It was known that to increase the resemblance to stone, a sand finish was applied to the painted wooden surface. Mrs. Chamberlain was familiar with its use at Mount Vernon, as long ago as 1966, when the mansion was due to be painted, she had suggested that because it was such an important building, it was entirely possible that the Lee Mansion would have had a sand finish as well. Lacking a scientific analysis of the paint, no evidence of sand was found, and the mansion received a coat of its accustomed gray with white trim. Much has been learned in the intervening years. Today, there's a broad awareness of the importance of research, scientific analysis, and professional advice. The painting, planned for 1994, offered an opportunity to carry out an authentic restoration of the mansion's original finish. Brian Powell, architectural conservator of the Society for the Preservation of New England Antiquities, now known as Historic New England, was engaged to do an analysis of the exterior paint. The first time this had been done, since the society owned the building. In sheltered places near and under the entry porch, conclusive evidence of a sand finish was uncovered, and it appeared that the exterior was an overall monochromatic gray. Windows and door frames, coins, cornices, pillars, and pilasters were of one color. The only contrasts were the window sashes and the doors. In 1961, a letter was received from the United States Department of the Interior National Park Service suggesting that because of the outstanding historical and architectural importance of the Lee Mansion, the Society should apply for listing as a National Historic Landmark. It was a proud moment when the bronze plaque designating landmark status arrived and was put in place on front of the mansion. Following the extensive work on the exterior of the building in the 1970s, attention was turned to the possibility of refurbishing 
portions of the interior. When it was decided to paint the rooms of the chamber suite, the Society initiated a scientific analysis of the paint by Historic New England. The objective was to determine the original color used on the wood paneling and trim. Examination revealed that the original finish was a highly fashionable 18th century paint treatment in which a vivid green glaze was applied over a base coat of Prussian blue. In the 1960s, it was decided that two small adjacent rooms on the third floor could be made into a museum. With the assistance of Narcissa Chamberlain, members of the committee in charge of creating the museum selected representative items for display. Native American artifacts, navigational charts and instruments, fishing gear, tools, games, dolls, jewelry, clothing, needlework, and so forth. An integral part of the exhibit were pieces of four pews crafted by John Norman and his son from Marblehead's first meeting house on Burial Hill. The significance of these important examples of 17th century oak joinery was recognized by the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, who requested their loan for inclusion in the museum's 1982 exhibit, New England Begins, the 17th Century.